I subsequently use this as a voltmeter and you can do that by putting two superconducting leads on. One lead there is a resistance, let's call it R. And I then apply the voltage I want to measure, let's represent it as a battery between these two terminals. Obviously, this gives a current determined by Ohm's law. And so I was able to measure voltages connected across these two terminals. And to cut a long story short, the, the sensitivity of this device was about 10 to minus 14 volts per root hertz. And that was the beginning of my career in squids that has persisted for 40 years since then. In fact, squids have been around, and the Josephson effects have been around for more than 40 years. That, that sounds like a technology which is very long in the tooth, very old and very mature, but I rather feel that actually uh, squids are uh, on the brink of another uh, reinvention of themselves, if you like, a, a sort of a renewal, a 40-year renewal, uh, where um, there are really some very exciting future applications of squids. Most of these involve reducing the size of squids towards the nanoscale, and that, I think, is the key to to squids' future um, uh, influence. To make very small squids from a single junction, you can imagine just having one relatively large junction and drilling a hole straight through the centre, and that is then a, a small DC squid. In this case, what we do is we start with a single junction. So we have our top electrode, we have our barrier material, and we have our bottom electrode. And we've already removed, with the focused iron beam, we've removed the material in this region and in this region. And the current is flowing vertically, so we have a single junction. But now what we can do is we can use the focused iron beam again and just cut a hole straight through the centre of the single junction. So we remove this material. So now, this hole is now the central loop for a DC squid. So we have two junctions in parallel and this is our nano DC squid. The nano squid, which in optics terms would be equivalent to having a um, two slits which are quite wide but are also spaced about the same distance apart as they are wide. So now we're not seeing the fan off envelope, so we just see the modulation. So if we can't measure small magnetic fields with the nano squid, we have to apply very big magnetic fields. What can we actually use the nano squid for then? Well, the, the most interesting thing is really for measuring the magnetization um, of very small particles. So, for example, a, a small nanocluster of a magnetic metal like cobalt. Okay, so, so with a small nanocluster you don't need a big pickup loop because they're very small things. No, and, and in fact you don't want a very big pickup loop because what you're interested in doing is measuring a, a very small magnetization of, of the small particle without it being interfered with by external fields. and, and if you have a small pickup coil, you're relatively insensitive to the external fields. It's right. actually an advantage. Right. Um, and there are two main areas where this, I think, will happen. And one of them is in measuring very small magnetic particles. Um, you might ask uh, what sort of magnetic particles require measurement. Well, uh, one area is in magnetic tags in things like biological applications. Another, uh, perhaps more significant, long-term application is in quantum information processing, where squids may be able to provide a readout mechanism for single magnetic spins. If you reduce the size of the superconductor, uh, a number of parameters change. This is not only HC1 uh, or HC2, but it's especially also lambda penetration length. And this penetration length or penetration depth has a large impact on the performance of devices and on certain properties. So you can actually use the nanostructuring of the device to change the properties, to change the sensitivity to field, change the penetration of the field into the superconductor. And especially if you, if you do more complex structures, you might be able to, to, to develop new devices, new device concepts. One of the things that has always amazed me about our field is the range of energies which we contemplate in superconductivity. 
At one extreme, the sensitivity to electromagnetic energy of a DC squid is limited only by Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, and therefore the energy scale we contemplate at that end is 6 times 10 to the minus 34 joules. This gives you a, uh, a magnetic flux to voltage transducer, which you can turn into a very powerful magnetic field to voltage transducer. So we can use the squid to measure magnetic fields which are millions of times smaller than the Earth's magnetic field. Detection of magnetic fields is a key for many industries, including defense, mineral exploration and food industries. Much of mineral wealth, such as gold-based metals, nickel, coal, uranium, diamonds and iron ore, is hidden beneath the highly conductive, often featureless, thick overburden. Fortunately, many of them have a magnetic signature, thus provide a means of detection. Here is a great example where the high current, high TC coated conductor can play a decisive role in development of ultra-sensitive magnetic sensors. The gradient sensor is made from high temperature superconducting quantum interference device, squid, operating in liquid nitrogen coupled with the superconducting flux transformer made from patent IPCO coated conductor. There have been many discussions on the advantages of magnetic gradient tensor surveys as compared to conventional total magnetic intensity detection. Magnetic tensor gradiometry offers a way to improve source localization from moving platform, but desired sensitivity of the measurements of the magnetic tensor components should be approximately 10 picotesla per meter. Sensor system enables user to visualize the depth, size and shape of deposit because it uses rotating magnetic radiometers to take measurements about three separate axes. Such an experimental system is cooled by liquid nitrogen and is ready for takeoff. Being an island, Australia has a very large coastline. This presents a many security challenges, one being a detection of submarines. For this application, desired magnetic tensor gradiometer sensitivity is one picotesla per meter. This is a very challenging requirement. So it seemed obvious to us that uh, we would be able to adapt the technology used in the geophysical industry to detect submarines. In a theory, Pilots whose aircraft are fitted with superconducting detectors will be able to measure the range, depth and bearing of submarine, how fast it is going and if it is diving, all from one flyby. Most applications, you create a magnetic field. Now, there, there's one application where you don't. You, the, the squid is the only instrument I know that has the sensitivity to actually detect corrosion currents. When you get corrosion, corrosion is caused by an electric current. And uh, people have used the squid to do a magnetic field map over a surface that's being corroded. And this has been very helpful to people who try to study the effects of corrosion on aircraft structures.